I am back. Just a sec. I am back. Hello. Yeah. Uh, it's hard. Invited? To see. What is your name? I am Max. Hey. Hello. I I, uh, I invited the, Van Neumann or Feynman. Feynman. This is Feynman. Hey, welcome. Thank you for coming. Nice to meet you. I just, um, I know a little bit about you, but I think um, it would be fun to speak to you about uh, quantum physics. <laughs> fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, fun so I'm... Uh, about, uh, fun to speak about something that is really very difficult, and, uh, but actually fun. <laughs> Right, I, I, you know, my, my illiteracy in, my, in mathematics is, uh, you know, preventing me from understanding it any deeper. But uh, I'm coming from metaphysical perspective, and from metaphysical perspective, it's kind of comes very naturally. It explains a lot. I see. And also, I, uh, I'm working on DNA, and obviously, my interest is how quantum physics works with DNA, and that's. Um, that connects no. the, us to saving the humanity. So the humanity's salvation is in understanding the quantum biology of DNA. That's the future. So that's where I, I think I'm, uh, I'm mm -hmm. connecting the future and the and the present any uh, better than anyone else. So I, I'm entitled to quantum physics. Quantum physics and DNA are connected, uh -huh. but it's a not an easy connection. It is, um, it's a mathematical connection, of course, but it's also a connection of energies. It's a connection of uh, the unseen versus the seen. Mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. yes. what I'm saying. Yes, absolutely. It, it is what you cannot see that is affecting what is seen. And so it is that quantum physics does affect all things in some way, in an unseen way, but it ends up to be seen in your facts and figures. It's seen in the outcome of what it is, mm -hmm. but the quantum portion of it cannot be figured until you see the results of it, because we are here seeing the results of quantum physics, but we are not seeing the quantum physics itself. It is like saying this. All of a sudden, there is a bruise on an apple. But where mm -hmm. did the bruise come from? You can see the bruise, but there is no reason for it. And so, therefore, you have to find what is unseen that has caused what is seen. Does that make sense? To yes, yes. But, you know, we have the sequence of DNA, which is yes. a huge, huge um, treasure for deciphering the puzzle. Yes. And uh, without quantum physics, I'm, not, I'm afraid we won't be able to understand the language of DNA because it's a big book with... Uh, a good language which we don't understand. Correct. And, it's like and, learning, learning a new language. Yes. Right. And uh, the sequence is here. I can access it right here on a computer. Yes. And what do I do with it? So my um, latest um, reading the book about you and others and quantum physics was a uh, realization that I might be splitting on timelines on each DNA and then merging them together. So I think DNA is written by splitting and merging timelines, and at every split it makes a choice. And I'm not sure, maybe at every merge it makes unchoice or something like that. When you're talking timelines, uh, what do you mean by timelines? I am I'm not familiar with how to engage quantum physics to a molecule timeline. Oh, um, no, the split is a collapse of the wave function. Wave function, that's what... Oh, you, wave function, what I understand that, yes. So the split is a collapse of the wave function. And then there is a theory of multiple worlds, which you liked. 
And, um, you know, I call, when you create multiple worlds, that's uh, at a split of timelines, they're just by definition. Yes. Uh, how do we go by this? I have to re recalculate my thought process to come into this particular time thought process. Yes. Because quantum physics and DNA, they are related. But I did not do a lot of relating to them from where I was in some ways. I did and I didn't. But I was trying to decipher the language of quantum mathematics because the language itself speaks to millions of different things and, and not just to DNA. So let me put my thoughts in order here. Is there a specific question you have? something that so, i could so there is a collapse of wave function yes and it is when the uncertainty becomes certainty and the life causes it all the time yes now the question is there should be a, a reverse process when it is decollapses uncollapses becomes uncertain again and what's the time period? How the time period is defined between collapse and uh, restoration of the um, delocalization? De uh, de localization and delocalization. What's the time period between those two? Collapse and yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. The time period between these two things does not have to be the same. Mm -hmm. it, because it can be different depending on where the collapse is and uh, the purpose of it. So it can take between, it could be a nanosecond, but then again, it could be a, a great deal of time, de depending on the purpose of the collapse. I'm talking about DNA, I'm thinking about- Yes, I know. DNA oscillating, making waves. Yes, but there and are at some, at some point collapsing the wave into um, collapse of the wave function, making a decision, and then uh, relaxing again into the um, delocalized state. Well, I do not know the answer to that. Right. Um, uh, tell, me, tell me about your alien connections. How were you connected in, to, to the aliens in your life? Well, I'm, they saw what I was doing, and they saw that I had connections to quantum uh, mathematics, quantum energies, etc., and was dealing with them in several different thought processes. And so that was something that interests them. So they were able to get in touch with me through quantum physics in the sense that they could, uh, they spoke to me through some of my work. I was doing some work and doing, uh, making some writings and all of a sudden I'm an automatic writing. Mm -hmm. And it was that they were telling me that, that my thought process about this was almost correct but not quite correct and they were giving me some indicators how i could move uh, closer to the correct answers now i thought it was a spirit at first i thought i was being visited by spiritual beings but then i realized that these were advanced beings they weren't just spirits they were advanced thought process they were they were helping me move forward in what i was doing and this was something that was actually made me very excited but also frightened me because i couldn't imagine that it was true and i thought perhaps i was losing my mind 
Uh, uh, did you have like uh, alien connections in your genetics and your past lives? I do not know. Of, well, yes, I do know. There was some alien connections in my past lives, but I do not. I do not remember ever seeing an alien, but they always seem to work with me in some ways. Does that make sense to you? Uh huh. They work with me, but they don't allow me to see them or perceive them as a physical being, but they are definitely there in spirit and in information. They are always working in the information. And because I know that this, that I was coming to this particular conclusion and all of a sudden the con the chain of thought process changed and I ended up with this conclusion over here and not the one that I was headed toward. And I, there was no way for that to possibly happen until, unless there was someone guiding and directing. And it had to be a highly intelligent source because it just, it was not accidental. It just wasn't accidental. So you were uh, you had extraordinary um, cap capabilities in in uh, in science and math. Mm. Where from does it come to your body? Where did it come in my body? Yeah, it came through the brain, of course. But historically, I could feel... how, did, how mm -hmm. did you historically how do how did you end up with that body of super super high intellectual ability? Where from did it come? It. It came from, some of it came from the aliens, I'm sure. Uh-huh. But- So you think you, think you were a hybrid? Yes, I do. Uh -huh. But let me tell you this. I always had a mind for mathematics. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. My mind was always mathematically secure. I was very confident about this. However, as time went on, my mind expanded and I couldn't understand it completely because there were, it expanded into areas such as quantum physics that I didn't originally have any thoughts about. But then I started getting inklings about these quantum physics ideas and I, I knew about it. So I started to read about it, started to study it a little, and things came very easily for me. And, but like I said, some of the pathways to my conclusions changed while in mid progress of trying to figure certain problems out, they would answer themselves in some ways. And I, I couldn't perceive that that was my intellect. I couldn't perceive that I did that because it didn't, it, it was too easy. It was too easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of your, uh, the keys to your success was your success as stand-up comedian. Um, I mean, speaking about physics, uh, you were a great lecturer and um, an, uh, an, an actor. Um, I, just, I, just, I enjoyed teaching so that people would understand. And one of, the re one of the things that people could understand was humor. It made it more interesting and it made it more memorable. And so adding humor to the lectures made things much easier for people to perceive and remember. Right, right. Um, I think you you um, you walked a, a how do you call it a, a thin line uh, between uh, be, uh, being a, like a very shrewd politician and uh, being plain. You know. I mean, there were a lot of sharks around and you were one of the biggest sharks and you somehow survived. Um, so on one hand, you had to be 
pretty negative. And on the other hand, you have to be pretty positive to be able to connect to the higher. This uh, is the knowledge. secret. Let me tell you what, what helped me. Uh -huh. People liked me. I was able to understand people and to manipulate them in a positive way. They, I knew who was impressed by intellect. I knew who was impressed by humor. I knew who was impressed by kindness and positivity. I would use all these things to move forward because any any wrong move and you could be sent away or or put down in some way and i needed to stay on top and so i could i used all the different things of my personality and my intellect to stay where i was so i in the book i'm reading there was a a situation where I mean there was an an old outdated theory which was called um, um, what was the name of it uh, somewhat I'm sorry is it That's all right. um, an old theory was I cannot pronounce something is blocking it I know it they're just blocking it so there it's was an old theory and there was a new theory I wouldn't I wouldn't call the names. And at some point, you understood that the new theory was correct, and you said, um, "You know, it, there might be something there, but let's just ignore it to to the to the conference, and um, let's just ignore it for now." And about ten years later, you embraced it all the way. So obviously, there was a politi political consideration, no, not scientific there. That just, just was interesting. They were not ready to embrace it. Many of them did not have the intellect to understand it fully and it would have been a great uh, amount of arguing and negativity if we were to pursue it at that time and I just said I, I, I don't think it's worth it because it's not going to uh, bring in fact if we would have discussed it then they might have, it might have been 15 years before it came back into the light. Mm -hmm. So I was just seeing, knowing the people around me, I could see the problems with it. Oh, thank you. My time is running out. Actually, it's already run out, but I have the last question. Um, so I am now considering, so I'm, I'm having uh, this um, project which I propose to fund, and it will be a relatively expensive project, but it has a great capacity to, ch to change the future of the humanity. And strangely, uh, there is like several paths to offer it to American uh, advanced defense agencies and um, actually to Russian investors and actually to Israeli investors. And it's a weird choice. I don't want to choose sides in the politics because it has nothing to do with politics, but apparently the politics intervenes there, here. And um, I'm sort of making a choice to offer it to American advanced defense agencies, although also um, my concern is that my choice is more out of convenience rather than out of convictions. That is something to think about. Right. Um, I would, is it more difficult to, I mean, is it that much more difficult to put it in the right hands? What is right hands? I have no clue what is right hands. Right hands is mine. Well, obviously you have an idea of what the right hands are, or you wouldn't have stated it that way. Oh, I, I think the, all of those hands are not too much right. I mean, I, I have no clue, actually, but I'm suspicious of um, uh, every side, obviously. All right. Well, then do what you feel that you should. I mean, actually... If it is easier to do it this way, then do it this way. If 
if it doesn't matter which hands it falls into. Um, but you were, uh, I think you had a very high clearance, so you have a very good understanding. Yes. Of, of, uh, I have an, yes, I have an understanding of high clearance, yes. You had a very good, very good understanding uh, of the situation 50 years ago, and uh, I don't know, are you following what's happening now? Maybe, maybe it's less evil nowadays. I, I mean, I'm, we are the thing is, so much no, no matter what you do, someone with a negative agenda will get a hold of the information. You cannot keep it quiet across any of these, uh, these aisles of understanding and information. So do the best that you can with what you have. You must put it in the most positive light as possible and then work from it in that way. Others will find ways to manipulate it. It is just the way it is. That is part of my cynicism toward the end was that everything that I wanted to do that was positive, someone had a negative slant for it. Everything that was good on earth, they seemed to want to wipe it out in one way or another. It just made no sense to me their, why they were bent on destroying the earth. I just did not understand it yeah same problem with, with me now i'm looking at people and you know each individual seems to be worth uh compassion but collectively this is like an evil force yes it is just the same as it always was so do not do the best that you can to bring forth the most positivity possible Mm -hmm. And that is the best you can do. If it falls into the wrong hands, that is not your fault. Just do not fall in with them. Like I did. Oh, you did? Well, <laughs> yes, I did. In some ways, yes. It was, I thought that I could help in a different way, and then they ended up using me for something different. So... So how do you feel about that now? I see it as you have to move in a positive way as best as you can. Uh -huh. That's all I can say. You must just move, put everything in a positive realm. So what, what, what uh, was your choice which you made wrong? I mean, could you do it differently back then? Um, I don't know. I just, I think that uh, I, it looked like a good direction, but it turned out to be a, de a little deceiving. But the thing is, it wasn't really, I wasn't really trying to head that direction. I just did. I, I really don't want to speak about it, but um, I think just do your best to stay in the clear. Let me clarify. Was it uh, working on, on weapons or was it yes, uh, putting, putting well, down good, good people? Because I think you did both. Yes, it was both. And did it end up in a secret space program? The secret space program is, yes, something that, actually, I didn't mind the secret space program as much. It was the other things. But was the damage done to the Earth, or is it still a potential oh, yes, damage? there's the still some, yes, the damage was done to humans and to Earth. Is it related to psychological warfare? Some of it, but I got to go. Don't, I don't want to <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, my time is over for sure. Thank you very much. Nice meeting and I hope to speak to you again. Have a good day, it was very helpful. Very well. Mm. Hello? 
Hey, hey, Jim. Hi, how are you? Yeah, the time is uh, running fast, 11.13. Oh, okay, yeah, I have to get going.